Hi y'all and welcome back to Professor True Love's Concepts for Nurses series. And in today's episode, which we are continuing the neurological series, we will looking at be looking at problems with the peripheral nerves, specifically weon barry syndrome and myasthenia gravis. Sources for today's episode include Iggy's Medical Surgical Nursing, 9th edition, and Soul's Introduction to Critical Care Nursing, 7th edition. So first, let us speak of Guillain-Barry Syndrome, or GBS. Guillain-Barry Syndrome occurs when there is a demyelination of the peripheral nerves. This is a result of immune-mediated pathologic processes whose symptoms include initial muscle weakness and pain, ascending paralysis, and then autonomic dysfunction. Clinical manifestations of GBS include muscle weakness and pain that have an abrupt onset. However, you should know that the cause remains obscure. Cerebral function or pupillary signs are not affected. However, there is cranial nerve involvement and also autonomic dysfunction. Now, this pattern of muscle weakness can help determine and differentiate Guillain-Barry from other types of peripheral and spinal nerve problems. Weakness and paresthesias begin in the lower extremities and progress upward toward the trunk, arms, and cranial nerves in ascending GBS. So the priority collaborative problems for patients with GBS typically include potential for respiratory and or cardiovascular distress or failure due to thoracic muscle weakness in hypotension and decreased mobility due to skeletal muscle weakness. Included in the, the plan of care should therefore be diagnostic testing, priority nursing care consisting of respiratory care, pain management, communication and emotional support, and nutritional support. In addition, you should consider involvement of the family and other team members because the GBS patient is quite complex and will, will require an enormous amount of care during the peak of the disease process. Education for not only the above, the data is the disease process, but the care and resources and medical treatments, including plasmapheresis. Besides plasmapheresis, patients will be receiving IV, IG, analgesics, and gabapentin. Another planning and implementation hallmark is to improve mobility and to prevent complications. And to do this, you should confer with physical therapy and occupational therapy. So continuing with important interventions, as I said, monitoring a respiratory status and managing the airway, managing cardiac dysfunction, improving mobility and preventing complications of immobility, managing pain, promoting communication, and providing emotional support are all priority interventions for the patient who has GBS. A bit of a side note about plasmapheresis. Plasmapheresis is a process in which the liquid in the blood, or plasma, is separated from the cells. In sick people, plasma can contain antibodies that attack the immune system. A machine removes the affected plasma and replaces it with good plasma, or a plasma substitute. So, plasmapheresis accomplishes this by removing the circulating antibodies assumed to cause disease. The plasma is selectively separated from whole blood. Blood cells are returned to the patient without the plasma. And the plasma usually replaces itself or the patient is transfused with albumin that is, the good plasma. Similar to GBS, but with a completely different outcome, is myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is a chronic disease characterized by weakness, primarily in muscles, innervated by cranial nerves, as well as in skeletal and respiratory muscles. It is progressive paresis of affected muscle groups that is partially resolved by resting. The most common symptoms are involvement of eye muscles, such as ocular palsies, ptosis, diplopia, 
weak or incomplete eye enclosure. Um, you should know that MG is an autoimmune disease of the neuromuscular junction, that it has remissions and exacerbations, that its peak onset is between 20 and 30 years of age, and that women are affected three times more often than men, and it is often caused by something called a thymoma, which is a thymus gland tumor. Now, th these symptoms may affect facial expression, chewing, and speech. In addition, there is proximal limb weakness, that is, weakness of the shoulders, flexors of the neck, and the hip flexors, and in advanced cases, all muscles are weakened, including respiratory and bowel and bladder function. Therefore, it is imperative that the nurse provide for respiratory support to promote mobility and to offer drug therapy, including cholinesterase inhibitor drugs, immunosuppression, and plasma oresis. Myasthenia gravis can be affected by the level of neurotransmitters. So remember that ACH stands for acetylcholine and CHE stands for cholinesterase. So cholinesterase inhibitor drugs include anticholinesterase and antimyasthenics. They enhance neuromuscular impulse transmission by preventing the decrease of ACH by the enzyme CHE. You should administer these medications with food and there are many drug interactions, so you should observe for those. Now there are some emergency crises that are associated with myasthenia gravis. The first is myasthenic crisis. This is an exacerbation of the myasthenic symptoms caused by under-medication with anticholinesterases. What happens is a worsening of the symptoms of MG. On the other hand, a cholinergic crisis is an acute exacerbation of a muscle weakness caused by over-medication with cholinergic, that is, anticholinesterases, drugs, and it is caused by an overdose of ACH medications. Phenomenon does help with the diagnosis of MG, so it's important that the nurse understand that some of these medications are given to rule out other conditions. In this case, we're going to look at the Tensilon test which is to distinguish between cholinergic and myasthenic crisis that we just looked at the last slide. You should know that in either case, atropine sulfate helps reverse the cholinergic crisis. A cholinergic crisis, if muscles are weaker after a tensilon test, then you should maintain a respiratory function. Anticholinergic drugs are withheld while the patient's on the ventilator and treat with atropine. However, if after the test, the myasthenic crisis, if the muscles are temporarily stronger, maintain respiratory function, and in this case, cholinesterase inhibiting drugs are withheld. So to review, the Tensilon test is performed. The priority for nursing management is to maintain adequate respiratory function, and that cholinesterase inhibiting drugs are withheld because they increase respiratory secretions and are usually ineffective for the first few days after a crisis begins. The long-term and irreversible nature of MG, it is important to provide interprofessional collaborative care, including immunosuppression to delay the progression of the disease, plasma phoresis, as earlier discussed, as well as respiratory support. Promoting self-care guidelines, that refers to the fact that the patient is going to need assistance with activities of daily living. So occupational therapy can come in and help with supportive equipment. Assisting with communication as the muscles continue to weaken and the patient is placed on the ventilator, communication will become more and more difficult. As well, nutritional support because the patient will not be able to adequately feed themselves. Eye protection because at the extreme ends of the disease, the muscles of the eyelids are even affected. And if necessary, surgical management following the thymectomy. So teach your patient and their families factors that increase the symptoms, that is factors in exacerbation, which include infection, stress, surgery, hard physical exercise, sedatives, enemas, and other strong cathartics. The patient should avoid overheating, 
avoid crowds, avoid overeating, avoid erratic changes in sleeping habits, and try to avoid emotional extremes. The nurse should teach about warning signs associated with the crisis and the importance of compliance to the plan of care. That does conclude this podcast, but stay tuned. There's still more neurological concepts to come. And we'll see you then.